Hi everybody, Jordan with Karcher here. As we all know, a true classic never goes out of style, and that's what we're here to talk about today. The classic series of auto scrubbers from Karcher. We have three units here that we're going to do a brief overview of, and as we do such, I'd like you to think of two main things. The first one is simplicity. All three of these auto scrubbers are extraordinarily easy to use. Even someone that hasn't used an auto scrubber much would have no problem operating one of these units. Number two, cost effectiveness. Since we don't have advanced electronics, uh, advanced key systems, uh, bells and whistles, things of that nature, all three of these units are extraordinarily price competitive for the marketplace. So let's go ahead and start our review. So starting at the front of the unit with the BD5050, you can see the yellow daily touch point. This is where we're actually going to open it up and we're going to fill it with fresh water and the detergent of our choice. Making our way to the side of the machine, right here you see the metal T-bar. This is what you would actually step on to dislodge that pad driver or brush driver. Right in front of the wheel, you see the transport wheel. If we're just going from point A to point B, we'll leave that up so we can transport it. When it comes time to actually scrub, we will depress it forward and then the brush or pad will actually be able to contact the floor. There's also a little sight gauge that shows how much fresh water and solution we have in the unit. As we make our way to the back of the unit, you see a couple of yellow daily touch points. Here we have the adjustment for the water so we can choose how much water it is that we need for the task at hand. The manual release for the squeegee assembly. Again, no actuators on this to save on cost. You also see the charge port, the red Anderson plugs for the, uh, the standalone charger when it comes time to recharge the machine. We also have the Karcher Easy Dial, so here we only have three cleaning functions. We select which function it is, turn it to that segment, and away we go. Moving to the side of the machine, you see another yellow daily touch point on the large black dirty water recovery tank hose. We'll simply pop that cap, slowly lower it to the floor, and then we'll be able to dump and rinse that tank out. Here you see one of the clips for the home base kit. You can throw a clip on there and take a tool with you so you don't have to go all the way back to the water closet. We also have the home base caddy up here on top so you can take some tools with you and again limit how much time you have to spend walking back and forth from the water closet. The last thing I want to show you here is the fresh water solution dump, the light gray service touch point. Uh, at the end of the shift if you have uh, water and chemical left in the machine you can open up that large spin out and dump it and then uh, fill it up for your next usage. So now for an overview of the BD5070. So this one has a little bit more capacity and about another six gallons compared to the BD5050. It is also one 20 inch pad or brush. As you see the yellow touch point right in front, again this is where we would fill it up with fresh water and detergent right here. Making our way around the unit, this is the foot pedal. It acts much like a foot pedal or a gas pedal on a golf cart. If you press it down all the way, that's as fast as you can go. If you want to hover over a dirty spot, you can bring your foot back and slow down a little bit. It also has the T-bar to dislodge that pad driver or that brush, uh, brush driver on the machine. This little handle right here, this is what we use to manually drop the vacuum assembly. Again, saving on cost, no actuator. We can also do the adjustment for how much water we're dispensing right here. A side gain for how much fresh water and solution we have in the tank left. Making our way to the rear of the unit, we of course see the squeegee assembly. We also have a hook here, which is for the home base kit, so you could take some other tools or implements with you. The large black hose for the dirty water dump, again with the yellow daily touch point as far as that cap to release that. Making our way to the left side of the machine, the yellow foot pedal here, that is what you actually use to manually release the brush driver or pad driver down to the floor to agitate the floor and help uh, emulsify the dirt. We also have a large spin out right here. Again, if we have a, a lot of fresh water and solution in the tank, it's going to be sitting for a couple of days. We don't want to leave it sitting in there. We can open up that spin out and we can drain the fresh water solution tank. So now we have the largest member of the classic series. We have the BD80-100. This unit is actually a 32 inch wide path. As you can see, I have two brushes on it. You can certainly do two pad drivers on it if you choose. And here we have the solution fill port right here in front again with the yellow daily touch point. This unit is actually a 27 gallon solution tank, so significantly bigger intended for larger areas, of course. We have the same way of dislodging the pad driver or bus driver, that little uh, T-bar. There is one on the other side. This unit comes with the home base rail kits. You could have a caddy on top there if you wanted to, as well as taking some other tools with you uh, for your facility. 
Making our way behind the unit, you actually see this yellow foot pedal right here. That is the manual release to drop the head down to the floor so you can actually scrub with it. It has a floating pressure of 90 pounds per square inch and you can actually lock it up in place so that it has 200 pounds of down pressure. So some pretty significant cleaning for warehouse applications or uh, industrial applications if need be. You have the same manual adjustment here as far as the water, how much chemical we are dispensing. The manual release for the squeegee assembly is located right here. So again, no actuators, we're able to save on cost. When it comes time to attach it and recharge it to a standalone charger, the Red Anderson, Club, uh, Red Anderson couplers are located here. There is a keyed switch off and on, a speed control when desired. Here is your dirty water dump hose along with the yellow daily operator touch point, of course. Right here, you see the yellow portion of the yoke. So when you actually wish to engage the scrubber and start moving, you'll disengage that yellow portion to the black portion. And again, the same light gray service touch point as far as the clean solution dump. Again, if we have a lot of solution in there, you know, 27 gallons, we may not use all of it. We can open that up and dump it so that it's not sitting in the machine for long periods of time. Well, we appreciate you spending some time today as we reviewed the classic series of auto scrubbers from Karcher. If you have any more detailed questions regarding one of these units, please contact your local area Karcher manager. They'll be able to assist you. Until I see you next time, keep it clean. Hi folks, Jordan with the Karcher Academy. Today I'm going to do a brief overview on some of the upright vacuums and some of the different families that we have. So let's go ahead and get started. Over here we have two vacuums I'd like to start with, the Sensor S and the Sensor XP. Now these two vacuums have been in the lineup for a great many years with great success and have a lot of commonality in terms of form and features. They actually are modular and about 95% of the parts between the two are the same and they're interchangeable. The big difference between these two units is the Sensor XP can automatically adjust its brush up and down to whatever surface it is that it's cleaning. The Sensor S is a manual version of that as far as adjusting the brush. So like I said, we've had these in line for a number of years. More recently, in addition to the Sensor family, is the Sensor 2. Now the idea behind this unit, as opposed to using advanced electronics to monitor airflow and brush agitation, this unit is more of a mechanical model. It's more simplified and has a couple different features and benefits to it as well. One thing that's unique about all the sensors, they are all single motor upright vacuums, so one power source as far as the brush agitation and air movement. They all use the same bag and they all use the same microfilter, so a lot of uh, unique features and uh, commonality between the three units. Now I'd like to move over to these units on this side. These are the dual motor upright vacuums. So I'm going to start first with the Access. It also goes by the designation the CVU-300 or the CVU-380. This is a dual motor upright vacuum, so a separate power source for brush agitation. There's more agitating going on. And a separate power source for air movement, so there's more air movement on. In short, this vacuum is just doing more work. So we've had this unit in a number of uh, years in the lineup and with great success. A vacuum I'd like to round home with is the Versamatic vacuum. This is a vacuum that we have had uh, for a couple of decades and it is a tried and true warrior of the vacuum industry. There have been some changes as far as aesthetically and some things with the internal components but again the idea is the same as far as a dual motor upright vacuum. Separate one for agitation, separate one for air of movement. So first floor is entryways where you just need more work to done. This has been a workhorse of the industry for a couple of decades. So that is a brief introduction and overview to the upright vacuum family here at Karcher. If there's any questions you can certainly contact your local area culture manager. They'll be able to assist you with a demo or with information. Until I see you next time, keep it clean.